Section 28 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Brian Keenan. Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 1, Section 28. Saturday 4. This was a day of much divine power and love to my soul. I was left alone and spent part of every hour in prayer, and Christ was near and very precious. The next day I preached with great solemnity at E.W.'s on Second Corinthians 6.20, and on Monday found freedom to move. After riding about fifteen miles I accidentally stopped at a house where a corpse was going to be buried, and had an opportunity of addressing a number of immortal souls. I then rode on through a lonesome, devious road, like Abraham, not knowing whither I went. But weary and unwell, I found a shelter late at night, and there I intended to rest till Providence should direct my way. This was something like the faithful saints of old times, mentioned Hebrews 11. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts, and in mountains, and in dens and caves of the earth, though it must be acknowledged their trials far exceeded. Tuesday 7. My soul was kept in peace, and I spent much of my time in reading the Bible and the Greek Testament. Surely God will stand by and deliver me. I have none other on whom I can depend and he knows with what intention and for what purposes I came into this distant and strange land, and what little I have suffered for his cause. At night a report was spread which inclined me to think it would be most prudent for me to move the next day. Accordingly I set out after dinner, and lay in a swamp till about sunset, but was then kindly taken in by a friend. My soul has been greatly humbled and blessed under these difficulties and I thought myself, like some of the old prophets, who were concealed in times of public distress. Thursday 9. I promised God that if he would lift me up, I would be wholly his, and spend as much time in returning thanks as I have spent in seeking his protection, which has been some part of every hour. My soul has been much comforted in reading J. Aline's letters, which he wrote in prison. I felt strong confidence in God that he would deliver me, being conscious that I sought neither riches nor honor, and that what I suffered was for the sake of his spiritual church and the salvation of my fellow men. I was informed that Brother J. H. was apprehended last Lord's Day in Queen Anne. May the Lord strengthen and support him, while he suffers for righteousness' sake. He shall be faithfully remembered by me in my addresses to the throne of grace. This evening I was called upon to visit a person in distress of mind, and the Lord gave him rest for his soul. Perhaps Providence cast my lot in this place for the assistance of this man. Friday 10. My heart was kept pure, and panting after God, though I was in some sense a prisoner, and under the necessity of being concealed, rather than sacrifice the peace of my conscience, and offend my God. O oh, my Lord, guide thy poor pilgrim through the rugged ways of this ungodly and dangerous world. And if I suffer with Christ here, may I finally reign with him in glory. Who suffer with our Master here, we shall before his face appear, and by his side sit down. To patient faith the prize is sure and all that to the end endure, the cross, shall wear the crown. My practice is to keep close to God in prayer, and spend a part of every hour, when awake, in that exercise. I have lately begun to read Mr. Wesley's notes again, and have always found both them and his sermons to be made an especial blessing to my soul. My exercises are very deep and various. The Lord makes great discoveries of my defects and shortcomings in many points. He melts my heart into humility and tenderness. He graciously draws me nearer and nearer to himself, and fills me with the spirit of holy love. 
Saturday, 11. God was my portion, and my soul rested in him. But I was at a loss to know what to do. My time was useless in respect to others, though I carefully improved it for my own spiritual advantage, which, for some years past, had been in a degree neglected, on account of my great attention to the souls of others. And I know not what to determine, whether to deliver myself into the hands of men, to embrace the first opportunity to depart, or to wait till providence shall further direct. The reason of this retirement was as follows. From March 10, 1778, on conscientious principles I was a non-juror, and could not preach in the state of Maryland, and therefore withdrew to the Delaware state, where the clergy were not required to take the state oath, though with a clear conscience I could have taken the oath of the Delaware state had it been required, and would have done it had I not been prevented by a tender fear of hurting the scrupulous consciences of others. St. Paul saith, When ye sin so against the brethren, and wound their weak conscience, ye sin against Christ. 1 Corinthians 8, 12 Lord's Day 12 This was one of my dumb and silent Sabbaths, and was spent in fasting and prayer, that the Lord may turn again my captivity. My soul was greatly humbled, and not a little comforted in waiting before God. I lament that part of the Lord's flock is carried away captive, but hope that those who remain in Zion will be holiness to the Lord, and found among the living in Jerusalem. Monday 13 I formerly thought it would be death to me to keep silence from declaring the word of God, but now I am in a measure contented, and hope to see a day of liberty once again. It appears to be the will of God that I should be silent for a season, to prepare me for further usefulness hereafter. Therefore my time shall be employed to the best advantage. Tuesday 14 I am not yet forsaken of all, but am happy in the family where I stay, and my soul is fixed on God. I have a private chamber for my asylum, where I comfort myself in God, and spend my time in prayer, meditation, and reading. The next day Brother J. F. held a public meeting. He appeared to be a well-meaning good man, and who hath despised the day of small things? Thursday 16. My soul was blessed with peace, but I earnestly desire to be more spiritual in all my thoughts, words, and actions. Friday 17. Being Good Friday, I devoted myself to fasting and prayer. How many such days have I spent in addressing large congregations on the mournful subject of our blessed Lord's crucifixion? But am now deprived of the privilege of making a public improvement of the day. I must sit down and weep, when I remember Zion, and the years of God's right hand. Oh, how I've longed to see his goings in the sanctuary, as in times past! Return, O Lord, to the many thousands of Israel, and cause us to rejoice according to the days in which we have seen trouble. I now enjoy a favorable opportunity of taking a circumstantial review of my past life. But, alas, how am I ashamed, and covered with blushing before God! My soul is bowed in awful reverence and melting humility before the mercy seat. My intention has been pure, as far as I can judge. But on account of my imperfections, if there were no mediator, there could be no hope of mercy. But, blessed be God, I can come with humble boldness to the throne of grace, knowing that we have a high priest that can be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, who was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. I hope to learn obedience by the things I suffer, and walk more watchfully and piously before God for the time to come. Saturday, 18. I labored to make the best use of my precious time, and hope to be better prepared for future service on earth, or for eternal service in heaven. I bear our dear, suffering friends on my heart. Lord's Day, 19. 
another solitary Sabbath. Ezekiel's portion is mine, to be dumb for a season. But the Lord gives me patience, and supports me under it. The family amongst whom my lot is cast use me with great kindness. And may the Lord show kindness to them according to all that they have done unto me. Monday 20 Reading the Revelation, with Mr. Wesley's notes, was made a particular blessing to my soul. But my conscience checked me severely for not reading more frequently that part of the sacred canon, seeing such a blessing is pronounced on them that read and understand it. But I intend for the future, if time and health will permit, to read one chapter in it every day. Tuesday, 21. I purposed in my own mind to spend ten minutes out of every hour when awake in the duty of prayer. May the Lord help me to pay all the vows which my heart hath uttered, and my mouth hath spoken in the time of trouble. Wednesday, 22. I finished Mr. Wesley's notes on the New Testament, and began to read Doddridge's Rise and Progress, but am not so decorated with holy love as the temple of God should be. I am reconciled to my condition, and in faith and prayer commit all events to my divine protector. This is an excellent season for dressing my own vineyard. Thursday, 23. God was near, and my heart was exceedingly humbled before him. I finished Doddridge, and was pleased, instructed, and affected thereby. I think an abridgment of this book would be of great service to our societies. Friday, 24. I began reading Honest John Bunyan's Holy War, and my soul was kept in peace, but earnestly desirous of every branch and degree of perfect love. Holiness is far preferable to the greatest wisdom. Lord's Day 26 I was still confined and obliged to keep silence, but spent much of the day in reading the Revelation, with Mr. Wesley's notes upon it. As this revelation was given on the Lord's Day, what can be a more proper subject for meditation on that day? Devoting much of my time to the exercise of prayer, I pray frequently for my dear parents and friends, as well as for myself. Wednesday, 29. Ventured to leave my asylum, and under the special providence of God came safe to my old abode, where I purpose spending these perilous days in retirement devotion, and study. I want for nothing but more holiness, and wonder at the love and care of Almighty God towards such a dead dog as I am. My spirit was greatly comforted by Psalm 106, 10. He saved them from the hand of him that hated them, and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. Friday, May 1 The minds of the people are so confused and filled with the spirit and troubles of the times, that it does not appear to me as if God required me to treat with them on spiritual and eternal subjects, till they can, with some considerate calmness, pay attention to those momentous matters. I have lately been grievously haunted by the temptations of Satan, but my desire is to die rather than live to sin against God. Lord, stand by me in the day of trial and every moment support my feeble soul. On Saturday also my mind was much harassed by my spiritual adversary, and my study and devotion were interrupted, so that I could do but little either for God or myself. Lord's Day 3 My mind was strangely twisted and tortured, not knowing what to do. It seems I know not how to fight, nor how to fly but I am persuaded there will be a speedy change in the wheel of providence, either prosperous or adverse. Others are now free, but I am bound. Reading at present no other books on the Lord's Days, I have lately read the Revelation, with Mr. Wesley's notes, three times through. Monday 4 Satan hath a desire to destroy, or at least to disturb my soul but I pray mightily to God against him. O oh, that he may rebuke the tempter, and make a way for my escape. 
on Wednesday my temptations were so violent that it seemed as if all the infernal powers were combined to attack my soul. Like Elijah, when persecuted by Jezebel, I was ready to request for myself that I might die. However, about noon the storm abated, and my soul was calm. I had felt as though I could neither pray nor read. But the Lord blessed my troubled soul while endeavoring to pray with Brother E. W. My temptations have been such as I never experienced before in the course of my life. But God will help me, and I shall yet praise Him. Both Friday and Saturday my spiritual enemies were upon me, but my soul had more strength from the Lord. My practice is to spend some part of every hour in prayer. Lord, what is man, that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man, that thou visitest him? On Saturday Brother W. came home, as an answer to prayer. On the Lord's Day I read the Revelation three times over, and experienced great sweetness in my soul, both in reading and family exercises. Monday, 11. My mind was deeply exercised, not knowing what to do. If the Lord delivers me, I shall be bound to praise Him. If I had a thousand hearts and tongues, and a million of years to live, all would be insufficient for paying the mighty debt of praise. Time and language and numbers all fail in point of praise and adoration for the unmerited mercies of a gracious God. Praise ye the Lord, ye immortal choirs, that fill the realms above. Praise him who formed you of his fires, and feeds you with his love. Tuesday 12 My exercises were still grievous, but I am persuaded that all these trials will contribute to the spiritual advantage of my soul. Temptations and prayer, as one observes, qualify a gospel minister for his work. But I am ready to ask, as one of old, Lord, are there few that be saved? May God vouchsafe to help and deliver his few afflicted people. Wednesday 13 I met a small congregation, and my soul was blessed in speaking to the people, as it usually is on such occasions. O oh my God, when wilt thou turn again my captivity? Surely Jacob shall rejoice and Israel shall be glad. Thursday 14 I still attend to prayer, study, and teaching the children, but cannot be fully satisfied without preaching the gospel, which appears to be my peculiar province. Though I find more relish for the word of God, and greater sweetness in reading it, than ever before. Friday 15 My soul was, for the most part, in peace though at times my own trials and the trials of others produced strong agonies of mind. But strengthened with divine might, I am able to oppose the tempter in his most violent assaults, and am brought off more than conqueror. The study of the Holy Scriptures affords me great pleasure. Lord, help me to dig into the gospel field as for hidden treasure. Saturday 16 it may be observed that two of our preachers have been apprehended, rather than do violence to conscience, and the men by whom they were both taken were dangerously wounded within a few weeks after they had laid hands upon them. I am now resigned to my confinement, and am persuaded that God, by His providence, will show me when and which way to go. Lord's Day 17 As a congregation was collected to hear the word, I ventured to preach, and found my soul much drawn out both in speaking to God and the people. Perhaps this was a token of future enlargement and usefulness. Monday, 18. My spirit was oppressed by heavy temptations. The preachers and people began to convene for the quarterly meeting, which was to begin the next day. Tuesday, 19. Brother C. X. began our quarterly meeting, and then I preached with tender sensibility and warm affection a humiliation sermon on Joel 2, 16-18. through 18. 
Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children, and those that suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber, and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thy heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land, and pity his people. The hearts of the people were greatly melted under the word, and the power of the Lord was with us in the afternoon also. We were quiet and undisturbed, and I hope the word will take root in the hearts of some who were present. On Wednesday there was so much company about me that I could not keep in my usual and desirable track of walking with God. Thursday, 21. My mind was somewhat dissipated. A young woman, who had been awakened by the instrumentality of Captain W., but deprived of the means of grace for about four years, and had thought she could never be happy unless amongst the Methodists, was now brought to God by faith in Jesus Christ, and found peace in her soul. Another person was also brought into deep distress for an interest in Christ about the same time. Our family meetings are now attended with great power. FRIDAY 22 Satan worried my mind with his temptations. But at night we joined the two families together for worship, and the Spirit of the Lord was with us in power. SATURDAY 23 I set this day apart for fasting and prayer, especially in behalf of Brother T.W. My soul was comforted to hear that Mrs. P., near seventy years of age, knew by experience that she could be born again, though she was old. This week the Lord has given me two, as the children of my bonds. Monday, 25. T.W. went back to have his case determined. He left his family in much distress of mind. I endeavored to minister some comfort to them. But in respect to myself, everything appeared to be under a cloud, so that I knew not, as yet, what the Lord would be pleased to do with me. I now began to read Barclay's Apology, and to make some strictures. FRIDAY 29 I spent much of the forenoon in prayer, and read through the book of Job, but was sorely tempted by the devil. My spiritual trials have been heavier and more grievous of late than I have ever experienced before in all the course of my pilgrimage. They seem to indicate to me that I shall lose my soul, or lose my life, or live for some peculiar usefulness in the Church of Christ. On Saturday Mr. H. Y. came to see me, and I ventured to set out for Mr. W.'s. But having been so long unaccustomed to riding, my body was exceedingly fatigued. However, my soul was much refreshed in meeting the people there. Lord's Day 31 My body was indisposed, but many people came together to hear the word of God, and as there had been some little disorders among them, I discoursed on Second Timothy 2, 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And, let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. We had a profitable time, and in the afternoon I went to hear Mr. C., who appeared to be a well-meaning, though a weak man. Monday, June 1. I rode about twenty miles and came home very unwell, and continued for several days afflicted with a fever and boils. But my soul was peaceably stayed on the Lord in the midst of various and heavy trials, both of body and mind. Lord's Day 7 Being Whit Sunday, I went to the barn, weak as I was, and preached on Romans 8, 7-9. through 9. My heart was enlarged, and the people were greatly melted and alarmed, and many of them felt the gracious drawings of the Father. But, alas, I am as gold in the furnace, though I must not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, 
which is to try me, as though some strange thing had happened unto me. In my patience may I possess my soul, and the Lord in his own time will deliver me. Surely, when this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall there be an eternal day without a cloud, ease without pain, and joy without any mixture of sorrow. I preached again in the afternoon, and found great liberty in my spirit. Peradventure, the Lord will, in this barren place, raise up a seed to serve him. Wednesday 10 I had both great peace and heavy trials, but have cause to complain of the want of more seriousness and devotion to God. I find the more pious part of the people called Quakers are exerting themselves for the liberation of the slaves. This is a very laudable design, and what the Methodists must come to, or, I fear, the Lord will depart from them. But there is cause to presume that some are more intent on promoting the freedom of their bodies than the freedom of their souls, without which they must be the vassals of Satan and eternal fire. Saturday 13. For a few days past my mind has been variously agitated at certain times by that restless fallen spirit, who so often attempts to break my peace. But my soul has been kept by the same omnipotent, gracious arm which has been so frequently displayed in my behalf. I went to R. W.'s, where all our souls were under the softening influence of divine grace in the class meeting. With animation of spirit, I preached twice on the Lord's Day, to large congregations. As the gospel of Jesus Christ meets with indulgence in this free state, I entertain a hope that it will prove a general blessing to the inhabitants thereof, and that Delaware will become as the garden of the Lord, filled with plants of his own planting. Monday 15 The congregation was large at Mr. K.'s, but showed too much appearance of spiritual insensibility. I have lately been surprised, and self-reproved, for not feeling the same earnest desire that the word might profit the hearers, after it was delivered, as I have felt before the preaching began. My soul was deeply engaged with the Lord, at this time, that the word might prove a permanent blessing. On Tuesday I heard Mr. T. preach a funeral sermon, which was well put together, but not calculated to reach the hearts of the people. End of section 28 Recording by Brian Keenan